Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> How's it going? All right, all right, all right. We've got 417 people in the room, 422 people in the room, counting all the hosts. All right, all right. Yes, uh, for those of you guys who are actually in Thailand, in Koh Samui, you guys can get in touch with us. D drop us an email at info at urbanforex.com. I am actually in Koh Samui right now. I am uh, staying at the Six Senses Hotel. So if you guys are in town, uh, get in touch. Get in touch, get in touch. All right, so before we get started, how many of you guys are new here? How many of you guys are brand new here? I want to know first timers. Okay, we got one, two, three. Oh, okay, there's a lot of new people in here. Welcome, welcome. First webinar with me or watched some recordings and stuff at least? Seen a lot on YouTube, okay. <laughs> Don't even bother to count. Okay. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Now, today is a very, very powerful topic, and uh, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to use a whiteboard, but the white you can see the quality of this screen is not so good, right? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a screen from the iPad to show you guys, so it's going to be a lot more clear there, but I'm going to keep my camera running so you guys can still, you know, uh, uh, see me speaking to you guys at the same time. So it's a very important topic today for those of you who, again, who don't know me. My name is Naveen Prithiani. I am your host here today at urbanforex.com and I'm a senior trader at forexwatchers.com. So again, it's glad to have everyone in here. How many of you guys are actually students of mine already? Current students, how many? Okay, okay. So we've got a lot of students in here as well. A lot of students in here as well. Now. Today's topic is a very, very hardcore topic. So if, if I may tell you that you might want to take notes, um, uh, you know, paper, pen, it, all of this is recorded. So in case you want to watch it again. So it, it's a little bit uh, hardcore and we're going to get into it straight. Um, just a little small, quick introduction. I don't want to waste any, any much of your time is the way we do things in this webinar is the more you interact, the better feedback I'm going to get. You are you have questions, you got to ask it, but we want to stick to the topic. You can't suddenly be like, okay, well, what do you think about gold right now? Like, we're not talking about gold. <laughs> it's like, what do you think about cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Bitcoin? Like, no, 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 no. So none of that stuff, okay? We're going to stick to the topic because people are here to, to learn about, well, what makes a successful trader? What makes a successful price action trader, right? So, first things first, let's do this. All right, here we go. Let me, <laughs> no kick today. All right, here we go. I'm gonna drop this down here. Okay, I'm just gonna put this over right there. We're gonna, we're gonna just kill all the host right there. We're, not, we're, just <laughs> we're gonna put my screen right on top of that. Okay, here we go. Screen sharing. Okay. All right. I'm going to put this on the side here so I can see all your comments as well at the same time. Okay. Can everyone uh, see the whiteboard? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to draw a circle. Let me know if you guys can see it. All good? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so today's topic, success. Okay, let's start with, okay, the four rules, the four rules. Okay, why is there four rules? Okay, I wanna, I wanna let you guys know one thing. Okay, when I, when I started off in, in Forex, I made a ton of losses, a ton of losses. I'm talking about credit cards maxed out, 50% of my salary is going into uh, the Forex market, into someone else's pocket, obviously. But going into the market, everything was just so, so exaggerated for me at that time. It was so expensive. Uh, I bought every signal service, every strategy, every system, every mentor out there I was after. I did 
everything that could possibly be done. And I always got this number thrown at me saying, hey man, the market's a 95-5 process. And I always kept my eye on, so there is a five. So there is a five. So there is a five. That's the only thing that kept me going. If there is a five, I'm going to be in that five. I'm going to be in that five. That's all that bothered me. Like, So because there was a number for success, that, that's got my focus on there. So I studied all the bigger players. Um, you know, Paul Tudor Jones, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, um, Soros. I studied every, every massive big player out there. And I started to be like, okay, what, are their, what do they do? How do they think? What are they, how do they differentiate? And it actually boils down to four things. Boils down to four things, okay? So let's get into the four things. We're gonna go into it one by one, okay? And I want you to find out in each of these processes, as I explain them to you, I want you to also reflect on how you've been trading and see, is there anything you can do to raise your standards to get closer and closer to a stabilized success? Okay, it's not just about reaching success and that's it. It's about stabilizing success, but it's because it's once reaching success is actually the easy part. Keeping success is the hard part. Yeah. So you'll hear you'll hear a lot of big players say that keeping it is the hardest part. Okay. Okay, everyone with me so far? Shall we begin? All right, here we go. Here we go. So first thing knowledge okay how many guys here know about Forex how many guys here know about Forex what do you know about Forex okay what do you know about Forex is it uh, buying and selling okay how many guys here actually have a very large company that you have to use for an exchange for can I use black yeah absolutely sorry about that I'll use black Okay, so stage one, we're going to talk about, right? Knowledge. Okay. Yeah, 5.3 trillion traded per day. Very good. Foreign exchange is an exchange of currencies, etc., 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 right? We all have that somewhat basic knowledge. Now, I'm going to ask all of you guys this one question. As a Forex trader, you, okay, all of you guys individually, as a Forex trader, what are you here to do? What are you here to do? Make money. Okay. Let's start. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something like this, right? I'm going to give you a brief basics about Forex and I want all of you guys to be honest with me to be like, oh my God, I knew the basics or I can't believe I don't even know the basics. Be very honest. If you can't say it out loud, say it to yourself. Yeah? Okay, so here, here we go. Here we go. So some of the very basic knowledge of, of, of trading. Okay, what is trading? What's trading? Okay, good. So there is knowledge there. There's knowledge there. It's buying and selling. But how does that work? Here we go. Okay, let's say this person is Pradeep. Okay, this person's Pradeep. He's selling something. And this person is Philip. Okay, I'm just taking names off the list that I see. This person is Philip, and he's willing to buy. Okay, he's willing to buy. Now, once these two people interact and saying, yes, we agree, what is that called? Okay, a basic, basic stuff, right? It's a, it's a transaction, it's a deal, a deal done deal, right? Exactly, okay, or it's a trade. They traded the product for the money. Okay, that's what was traded. Okay, now, what happens if they don't agree on the transaction or the deal? All 
Oh, okay, there we go. Adrian, negotiation, that's the correct word. Now, prices move. Okay, now the prices move. <laughs> they kill each other. No, now the prices move, right? So let's understand this concept a little bit. Okay, let's understand this concept a little bit. So the prices are moving based on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you guys in situations. Who are the players trading in the market? We got banks, banks, central banks. Oh, sorry. That was not good. Here we go. Banks, central banks. We have corporations. We have funds and we have us, okay? That's us, you and me, traders. Okay, that's us right there. <laughs> okay, so now let's understand one thing. Now the banks and central banks, why do they get involved in currency? Is it for profit? No, they're here to maintain the economy. Okay, they're here to maintain the economy. The economy is going to crap, so that what they're gonna do is they're gonna lower the interest rate, have more people start buying stuff again as the economy arises and it's getting too dangerous to inflation and all that stuff, they're gonna increase the interest rate so people stop buying. Simple as that, you understand that basic knowledge? You want to go buy a car and they say 0% interest, you're going to buy the car. You're going to be like, yeah, I can afford that. You want to go buy a car like 10 years down the line and they say, well, now it's 20% interest. You're going to be like, you know what? Screw you. Here's my nice middle finger. You're right? You're going to be so angry about it. Like, why, why are they charging me so high? That's so, so horrible. Okay. So same thing. So central banks are not interested about turning a profit there. They're actually in there to control the economy a bit. So make sure that it's stabilized as much as possible to keep it balanced. Okay, corporations, corporations, okay? Corporations, what, what are corporations doing? What are corporations doing? Let's say you guys are Google, okay? You guys are Google. Okay, all of you guys together, you, got, you guys are just like, all of you guys own Google and you're you guys live in the US, all of you guys live in the US where Google initiated from, you guys are from there, and you're, but you're doing business in London, let's say. Okay, so what's your currency? What's your currency pair? Okay, you guys are from the US, but you're dealing in London. So your currency pair is pound USD, correct? Okay, so you're living in London, and your, your currency pair, sorry, you're living in the US and you're doing business in London, your currency pair is pound USD. Now, you made a lot of money, you need to transfer the money back to the US, you get involved in the currency market to do the exchange, correct? So, is there a reason why uh, uh, Palm Group, can you stop soliciting please? We don't do solicitation in here. We wanna focus and stay focused. Uh, focus group by soliciting is not gonna make you focus and learn more, okay? So, focus. <laughs> okay, anyways. Getting back to this thing. So, corporations, you wanna exchange funds, right? You wanna exchange the money, get back into business, correct? Now, what do traders do? What do traders do? Why are they involved in the currency market? There is no reason for a trader to be involved in the currency market for any particular reason except profit. The person goes in, grabs a chunk, goes out and says, very nice. That's a trader's job, okay? Now, does he provide something in exchange? Yes, he provides liquidity. Because when someone's trying to get rid of their stuff, well, who's gonna buy it? A trader might buy it because a trader doesn't have much knowledge of why price is moving where it is moving. Because unlike all the other players, a trader has no idea what is going on. He is just assuming based on opinions. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Okay. 
So a trader already his knowledge level is a lot lower than these guys and these guys and these guys. When prices go down, if the central bank knows that, okay, this is good, we want to raise their interest rates, okay, because the economy is getting better. A trader might look at this as, oh, downtrend, okay? It's a downtrend, so keep selling. Keep selling, sorry, okay? While a fund, on the other hand, might be like, the economy is supposed to go upwards, so this means, oh, discount, buy more. It goes down more, oh, cool, buy more. Oh, cool, buy more. Oh, cool, buy more. Wouldn't it be nice to know when you need to keep adding positions instead of getting scared and thinking it's a sell? You see the difference between the knowledge that's missing? So that's the difference. Like a, a, a trader is just simply looking at this thing and saying, well, I guess it's going down. So my opinion says sell. My strategy says sell. My system says sell. My mentor says sell. And the news says sell. Okay. So do we all agree that there, yeah, traders have a big disadvantage when it comes to knowledge. Correct. Okay. Now, to be in the 95, 5%, right? To get into that 5%, do you think these people have knowledge? Yes. This is the freaking Olympics. This is the Olympics. You don't show up at the Olympics with a candlestick pattern, right? It's not gonna work. You don't get there and be like, I studied how to draw a support and resistance line. I got this. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work like that. Yeah, you got to pick up some knowledge. So one of the major things that I've known about these bigger players is they're hungry for knowledge. They're hungry for information. This is why a lot of hedge funds get in trouble because they don't even want to take a risk of not knowing. So they want inside information. That's when things get a little bit shady, right? You're, they're going doing some illegal stuff now because they don't want to get the wrong information. So do you see how, how valuable information is? Okay, so you want to keep that in mind. Knowledge. So if if you if you're saying I'm a technical trader, and someone says, "Hey, man, uh, I'm really good with fundamentals," you gotta listen. You gotta listen. Yeah, please teach me. What do you What do you know about fundamentals? I'm curious to know. Someone says I'm good at price action. Please teach me. What do you What do you got about price action? I'm I need to know. You have to grow your knowledge because if you get if you get close your brain on the knowledge part and saying. I know everything there is to know, but then when you go home, you trade and you're winning, you're losing, you're winning, you're losing, you're like, well, obviously I don't know anything. Yeah, knowledge is key. I need to grow my level of knowledge. Does that make sense? How many of you guys actually see all, all around the internet that Forex has actually turned into a religion and everybody's fighting behind, I know exactly where the markets are going to go. And when they're wrong or right, they just argue and bicker with each other so much while the other player is simply just sitting there and be like, let them do what they want to do. When they get into the market, I'll take the money. It's as simple as that. Okay, these are the real big traders who know what's going on. Okay, so knowledge is key. Keep your, keep your mind always open as much as you can. You want to take in as much information as you can. You want to sit down. And then take a take a look at that information from a distance and be like, well, what does that mean to me? Does that make sense to me? Can I put that on a chart and be like, huh, is that logical? Is that illogical? Can this be taught to everybody in the world in 10 seconds? If yes, obviously it's not the easiest thing to do. It's the Olympics. No, not everyone makes it. Does that make sense? So take it through a filter. Take it through a filter. Okay, but take in the information. Take it in, take it in. Okay, here we go. So the next stage, what do you think the next stage is for these larger players? Okay, so uh, for these basics, just very basic, does that make sense to you guys? You guys all see where there is a lacking, missing of information. Okay, as traders, we assume we have the upper hand, but all we are is, I hate to say it, we're like the bitch of the big players. We're, we're there to take their debt because they need to offload it to somebody. 
Okay? So if and, and, and I said that in one of my previous webinars. If you and I, okay, if you and I were both billionaires, right? We're both billionaires, and you and I were like, hmm, listen, uh, Naveen, um, we have a lot of money sitting in the bank. We got like 30 billion in extra cash. Greece just had a financial meltdown. Let's go to Greece because I know the president and this and that and the economy is going to turn around. It's going to take 10 years. Let's go to Greece right now and let's go pick up some properties near the bay side, near the waterfront. And there are $6 million properties. We'll get them for like $2 million each. Let's pick up 10 or 20. Okay, so you and I, we, we fly out to Greece in our private plane. We buy the whole front side of the ocean. Okay, we buy every property we can because the economy is in a turmoil. While everyone is getting rid of their euros and crashing and everything, we're out there shopping, right? So we go there, we buy all the properties out there, and now as the economy starts to rise, you know, they get a bailout and other countries are helping it, blah, blah, blah. The money starts to rise, our property values have suddenly turned into 10 million a piece. Now, you are looking at that, I am looking at my properties and be like, well, I need to sell this property. 10 million, I have to, one property, I have $1 billion that I need to remove. Okay, because I wanna sell it to, to turn a profit. I'm never gonna live in Greece. I have all these properties, I gotta get rid of it. I just did it for an investment. So how do I get rid of it? I come to you, hey man, do you, you have the ability to buy uh, $10 uh, billion worth of properties. You wanna buy my properties also? What do you think you will say to me? What do you think you will say to me? Yeah, you're gonna be like, are you crazy? I'm trying to get rid of mines also. I have the same information as you saying cash out. I have the same information as you saying cash out. Yeah, what am I, stupid? I'm not gonna take it off of you. So then, we, you and I are both in a dilemma who at this stage of the market will buy at such high prices? Who does that? Which group of people from this list does that? Retail traders. They are willing to buy at any time because they see an uptrend and that they think that's a buy. They see a downtrend, they think that's a sell. Does that make sense? So do you see where a trader sits actually in the market? What's his value, a retail trader's value in the market? Yeah? Like he's the final piece, he's the final, final piece. Okay? All right, so keep these things in mind. Knowledge is, is a big thing, yeah. So if you have this information, you don't have to be the person who takes the hit. You can be 5% of the traders who've revved up their knowledge and actually turn millions in profits by doing nothing. They don't even go out and buy properties. They're just like, I have an idea. I'm watching the big players. I know what they're doing. I'm gonna piggyback a ride and I'm gonna make money off on it too. They make 10 billion, I make 1 million. Good enough. But I didn't have to go up, fly out to Greece and buy properties. I just had an idea of what's going on and I stayed on top of it and then I made my deal. Make sense? Okay. So now, let's go into stage two. Okay, one was knowledge. Number two is discipline and routine. Every big player that I've studied, every single big player that I've studied, they have these, these things down to the T. They know exactly what they're doing in the morning. Okay, they, they wake up in the morning. Uh, uh, Robin Deep, you're asking where am I? I'm actually in Thailand right now. Okay, so they know exactly what they're doing uh, for their discipline and their routine. So they wake up in the morning. Yeah, they smile. They do their meditation. They, they do their yogas, some people do their fitness or go to the gym, and then they settle down, they start to work, they look at their calendars, their schedules, they study the news, whatever they have to do, and they understand all the stuff and they keep it in lockdown. What happens if a larger player says, from nine to six, 
I have to work on uh, my charting. But then, okay, nine to six, I work on my charting. Okay, I'm gonna give an example. Let's say this is Sally. Sally, okay, here, give her a nice skirt. That's Sally, okay? Yay! Okay, here we go. Okay, so Sally is there, and Sally's, Sally has now gone from nothing to multi-millionaire over the years. Okay, and now her schedule says from 9 to 6. Yeah, sorry, my drawing is, is not the best, but just trying to make a point here, okay? Uh... Yeah, it's, it's not a satellite. It's a, it's just a skirt and shoes, I guess. Okay. Anyways, so Sally has gone from nothing to multi-millionaires. Okay, multi-millionaire, and her schedule says from nine to six, I need to work on my charting. Okay, I need to work on my charting. Now, at five p.m. Okay, nine to six p.m. Basically nine a.m. to six p.m. Okay, at five p.m. the phone rings. She picks up the phone and hits her friend. Kelly, right? Kelly calls. Okay. Kelly calls says, hey girl, there's a nice cocktail party. We got a private yacht. We're going to, I don't know, Usher's house. What do you think Sally does? Yes. Sally declines. What do you think the average person will do when when an average person works and there is an opportunity not to work, what does the average person do? Screw work, man. I hate my boss. Screw that idiot. I'm out of here. <laughs> Usher is waiting for me. He's not going to wait too long. I got to go now. It's 5 p.m. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So this thing for them is unbelievable. I, I haven't seen the level of discipline the work ethics and the routine that these guys have, okay? We all look at any millionaire or billionaire or movie star and, and think, man, this he or she must have such a good life, right? They have such a good life and it's so easy for them. They make one small movie uh, and then after that movie, you know, they make it for, let's say, you know, 12 months and then they earn $4 million. Hey, I can do that. Yeah. But isn't it the hard work that we don't see to make that one scene of that movie, 50 retakes, and then having that quality that actually goes onto the screen and the other person watching from the screen is like, oh man, he's good. I like that. That's so good. We don't notice that. We just see the easy stuff like, look at that BMW, look at that Ferrari, look at that you know private jet that he has. And the mental capacity is saying, why don't I have that? Okay. So, so, so stage one is how much do you know? How much do you know? And then stage two, okay, if you start to know a little bit, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? Okay, does that make sense? Can I speak Hindi? <laughs> well, this webinar is in English, but I know some Hindi. But, okay. All right, so here we go. Let's get into stage three. Okay, here we go. Is the blue still okay? You guys can uh, see it, right? Okay. Cool. All right, stage three. And then we have a stage four after that. Okay, knowledge, discipline, and routine. Okay, stage three is clarity. Clarity. Please add some Hindi words. I can add a Hindi accent if you want. Stage three is totally clarity, okay? <laughs> no, we're just gonna. I'm gonna keep it in English, please. Like, I, I'm more comfortable in English. Okay. So stage three is clarity. Okay. <laughs> you wanna you wanna 
keep the clarity. <laughs> you guys got me laughing now. Okay, let it die out. Hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to this. Back to this. Okay, stage three is clarity. Okay, I say this a lot in uh, some of my courses here, saying if. Let's ask some of you guys uh, in here. All of you guys who are here for trading, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picking on you guys. You guys can answer if you want or answer mentally. It's okay. Um, as traders, you guys want to make money, right? Now, if you want to make money, I want to ask you this: How much money? Yeah, millions, truckloads, unlimited, so much. Well, like you, you know. So here's the thing. There is no clarity. There's no clarity. So here we go. Let's understand this concept. Why is clarity important if my goal is to make as much money as I can? That's a good goal, right? Because even if I want all the money, you know, like the saying goes, if I shoot for the stars, I'll at least land on the moon and stuff like that. Uh, but is that really practical? It's like, I want everything, so I will at least get something. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Trust me, it doesn't work. I've been hearing that all my life growing up from family and friends. I want to kill them all. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Okay, so clarity. What is clarity? Okay, clarity is as... Okay, the example I use in a lot of my uh, courses is if I was to drop you into the ocean... Okay, from a helicopter. Okay, this is my awesome helicopter. Okay. Okay, if I was to drop you into the ocean from the helicopter, and now you're in the water. Okay, what's your objective? What's your objective? Yeah, swim for an island. You want to survive, you want to swim. Okay, so your objective... Okay, is just like saying, I need money. Right? It is nothing but a simple desire. I need money. I need money. I need money. Okay, how much money? What are you going to do to make the money? How do you produce it? It's the same thing with this. Okay, well, he needs to get to an island. So what does he need to do? Swim. Okay, if he swims, which way? This way? This way, this way, which way? How does he swim? Backstroke, front stroke, diving, snorkeling? What is he going to do? Now, clarity is basically saying, if I put land, okay? Okay, excuse my palm trees. But if I put land in your vision, in your field of vision, then anything that you particularly do, whether you swim, you dive, you backstroke, you, you float on the way there on your back, everything counts. Does that make sense? That is clarity. You know what needs to be done. Detailed goal, exactly. If someone says, I want a Ferrari when I have a lot of money, I want a Ferrari, okay. Well, which Ferrari? How much does it cost? What are you going to do to get it? What is the financing cost? How much interest are they going to charge you? So what does that mean for me on a monthly basis that's going to come out of your pocket? Break it down. Break it down. If you do not have clarity, the problem in trading, because we're relating this to Forex trading, right? Okay, here we go. The problem in trading is there's no one. Okay? Respectfully speaking, there's no one there to kick your butt. In a job, the boss tells you what you need to do because the boss has clarity. Right? The boss tells you, this is what I need done because he's got clarity. The manager tells you, this is what I need done because the manager's got clarity. And the employee's like, oh my God, I can't believe he's making me do this. Uh. <laughs> right? So he's got all, all these 
aggression coming out. But in trading, just like in a job, when you're working, you're working, you know, well, what's my promotion going to be like? Hmm. If I have a promotion, how much am I going to earn? Okay. Uh, what do I need to do to get to the promotion? Everything is so clear. Everything is so clear. You got to play a little bit of politics maybe here and there, but it's so clear of what's the next step. Correct? And every, every now and then you do such a good job and you get two, two levels of promotions higher and you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Thanks. Clarity is exactly having that. In trading, there is no clarity. We enter the market by saying two things. This is how much money I have. Let's say you have $1,000 in your account. So there is clarity in how much, you can, how much you can lose, but there is no clarity on how much you want to earn. This is open. Okay? There's clarity on this side, but there's no clarity on this side. It's vague. So once that is vague, then how do you know what you're doing is effective or not? If you earn $100 of profit today, can you actually be happy? How do you know if, that's, if you're supposed to be happy? Is that closer to your goal? Or does that mean nothing to your goal? You will never know. So if you never know, you never become happy. And if you're never happy, well, you don't know if you're progressing. It's a vicious cycle. Vicious, vicious cycle. Make sense? How many of you guys are with me right now? This is this. What I'm explaining to you is an extract from my motivation and daily routines. You have to have mental clarity. Okay. It's almost like you want to pick up any interview of a billionaire, every single interview, he'll say the same thing. You need to know what you want. You need to know what you want. Make sense? You have to absolutely know what you want. Now, how many of you guys have seen my Facebook uh, videos of me traveling and here and there and you know, different islands and stuff like that? Yeah? You guys have seen me that, right? Now, how did that come along? I'm going to give you a little brief background. How did, how did that come along? Okay. It wasn't that one day I was sitting at home and I was like, I need an island. <laughs> it wasn't like that. It, it was just this constant bombardment of society on me saying, success is going to an island. So that ideology became my ideology, thinking that I want to end up on an island one day and I want to go there as many times as I want, all the time as I want. And then my next goal was immediately like, okay, I'm going to work super hard and I'm going to work from the beach. How many of you guys want to do that one day? Yeah. Okay. Let me explain to you one thing. I don't know who came up with this concept, but it's the worst place to trade. Okay. I went to the beach and tried to work from there. There's sand in my laptop. The glare of the sun is so bright. I can't see anything on my screen. There's women walking by half naked and I, I can't focus there. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> so that ideology is just ridiculous. It looks great on a picture, but no one's actually working. I promise you that. <laughs> so I tried that. That one doesn't work. So sometimes you just got to try stuff. You got to try stuff and then you learn yourself and saying, this can't be my dream. This is so stupid. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. And then you change your goals and you're like, you got to do different. You got to do something different. So that's how I, how I got into trading. Trading for me was, well, one thing I was working for a bank, right? I was working for BBNT bank in Washington, DC, and it bothered me for some time that I can't, you know, I got, I was having a very good salary. I was earning around $50,000 at the age of 20. Okay. At the age of 20, I was earning that kind of money. And I was like, I just can't do this all my life because I actually had, you know, I was lucky enough to have a, a father who, who was wealthy when we were younger and then he lost his wealth. So let me explain a quick story very quickly so I can give you that clarity idea of where the clarity came from for me. It happened to me by luck, but I don't want it to happen to you by luck. You guys have to create it. So what, what happened was... Um, you know, my father had a lot of money growing up and then that money was gone. All, you know, the business went down, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly I moved to Bolivia, lived in Bolivia a few years, and then I had to move to the U.S. to work. 
Okay, I started working, I worked my butt off, I was in college, while in college I got this job at the bank and I was earning 50K uh, a year. I made my college part-time so I can be full-time at the job. And now, I'm, now I'm at the job and I'm doing $50,000 a month. I get my paycheck. I take that paycheck and I go out shopping. Okay, I go out shopping and I buy the stuff I used to buy, okay? I bought clothes from you know, Armani Exchange and I'm, I'm buying bags, I'm buying all kinds of stuff, you know, all kinds of funky materialistic stuff that I used to buy, okay? And then I started to realize that's 35% of my income. Okay, it didn't make any sense to me because I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is it possible that my father gave me all of this so regularly, he paid the house rent, paid for our vacations, gave jewelry to my mom, and had money left over in the bank. Wait, how can I do this while being in a job? It doesn't make any sense. That was for me the moment of clarity where the questioning began. It's like, this does not work. And then I thought 10 years ahead, if I am continue to be the best employee of this bank, what are they going to put me at? 70K? 80K? 100K? What is that going to get me? I am still going to be below of what my father used to give me, which doesn't make any sense. That's when I said, wait, I went and talked to my father. I'm like, wait, how did you do all this? Doesn't make any sense. He's like, well, well, you're working for somebody. You're not working for yourself. It's like, oh. I took that idea of I'm working for somebody and not for myself, combined it with I want to go on a beach somewhere, and then I was like, okay, so I need to work, but it cannot be at a job somewhere, or I got to do something, but it cannot be physical. I got to be on the internet. And that's how I led to Forex. Because if, and there was another saying from my father saying that if you want to do something, do it big because it takes time. So I was like, well, what's the biggest thing on the internet? Well, it was Forex trading at that time, and I was really interested in trading, and that's how my journey began. Does that, does that make sense? So, yeah, yeah. So it, it does become a, a career like that. You need to have that mental clarity of why. Okay, that, that brings me to a secondary part of this that I wanted to, wanted to talk to you about is fire. Is fire. I want to ask you guys, all of, all of you guys, this personal question. Do you have desire or do you have fire? It's a simple question. Do you want to make money? Is that just a desire or is it really bothering you in your gut that I can't wait to do this well? Which means I get home, I get to work. I wake up in the morning, I get to work. Where is the fire? Is it burning sensation inside of you? This is another point that I saw the billionaires have. Warren Buffett said his account balance was his scorecard and he said I want the highest score in the world. Do you see that kind of fire right there? It's a simple kid growing up buying stuff and and taking his fire to the next level saying I want the highest score in the world. Pretty good right? Pretty good right? So. And, and then it depends on if it's a desire or fire that's going to make you do your actions that you need. Okay? So, I mean, of course, you know, in, in my courses, I explain how we go from desire to fire to make sure, excuse me, that you're revved up, you know, you're pumped up every morning when you wake up and you're like, I got to crush it today. If I don't crush it today, what, what happens if you don't crush it today? Okay, what happens if you don't crush it today? What do you lose? You lose one thing only. Time. Time is a currency no one can own. Time is a currency no one can own. How many of you guys believe that Fibonacci numbers work in the real life? 
Yeah, you guys, you guys, how, you guys know about Fibonacci, right? The Fibonacci numbers. Do they have, do they work on the markets as well? The Fibonacci numbers are basically saying there's a mathematical ratio that repeats in the universe everywhere. Okay. So some people are saying yes, some people are saying no, some people are saying in context. Okay. Hit and miss. Okay, but when they work, do they work perfectly? Okay, and when they do work, when they don't work perfectly, can you adjust your Fibonacci and then it looks perfect again? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you something I told some of my students at FX Street uh, in the premium webinars there. Wanna I want you to focus on one thing. Trading, Fibonacci, and many things in life they deal with the fact, but they deal with an illusion of a fact. Now, what does that mean? Okay, it's very complicated. What does that mean? Okay, if I was to tell all of you guys, every one of us is going to die one day. Is that a fact? It's a yes. But can I tell you when? Now, that's the problem, right? Fibonacci is very similar. It works, but we just don't know how, where to plot it from, where it begins, where it ends. We just, that illusion is not perfect. Okay, <laughs> unless you're a hitman or a murderer. Yeah, of course. But, <laughs> but do, you, do, you, do you get what I'm trying to explain here? Trading is very similar like that. That means you have to increase your knowledge as much as you can. Okay, so let's get a little bit deeper. Okay, let's get a little bit deeper. Okay. Okay. Stage four. Stage four. Okay. Identity. Okay. Are you aware of your own identity? When I study these larger players, it's almost like they know who they are. When you, when you tell a person like Warren Buffett, hey man, why don't you... Uh, invest into uh, technology. Oh, no, 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 I, that's not me. I'm not good with technology because I don't know where that mumbo jumbo is heading. A website, I can't buy a website. I don't know what, what that is. I, I, don't, I can't make sense of it. That's just, okay. So then what can you do? Oh, I can do uh, mom and pop stores and businesses like Coca-Cola and stuff. And everyone's like, you're so stupid, man. The world is going to technology. If you don't invest in technology, you're, 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 you're finished. Well, he is finishing, but he's finishing first, right? So you, you have to learn your identity. Like, who am I? Who am I? Okay? Who am I? Okay, now, who am I might be very difficult to answer, but what are your traits? Okay? We ask this question a lot in what type of trader are you? How many of you guys actually have that course? What type of trader are you? Yeah, the question opens up saying, are you aggressive? Are you conservative? Or are you a confirmation person? Okay, aggressive means you pull the trigger too fast. Okay, even this could be in life also. You're too fast to get angry, too fast to do anything. You're too fast to judge too fast to do anything. Conservative, too slow to make a decision. Okay. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't wanna be wrong, I don't know. It's conservative, you wanna take your time. Okay, confirmation is show me. Now, which one of these threes are the most dangerous ones? Number three, number three. You know, as, as many of us might think that these are my bad qualities, they're not. They're who you are and you can actually use them to your advantage. You can actually use them to your advantage. Okay, yeah, for those of you asking what type of trader I am, I'm aggressive, I'm aggressive. 
which is the reason why my risk to reward is extremely high at times, but I will be wrong a lot more than the conservative trader. Okay, so a confirmation trader, why is this the most deadly one? Is because he is not the forefront of making a decision. He is always going to be too late in the market. Only speaking in terms of the markets, okay? Now, can we say anyone trading right now in, in cryptocurrencies, are they a confirmation trader, aggressive, or conservative trader? Confirmation trader. They wanted to see someone else make money first, so then they can say, Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, you can also combine that with aggressive because they're buying at such high prices. There's no discount available because there is this idea of tomorrow and tomorrow says, well, what if it goes higher? That's the aggressive mind. What if it goes higher? If it goes higher, I don't want to miss that. Then I don't get my Ferrari. Does that make sense? Yeah, Kalina, very good, yeah. If you hear about an opportunity, you're late. Remember that concept, always. If you hear about an opportunity, you are late. Now, I'm gonna explain one more thing to you guys about knowledge, okay? One more thing about knowledge. This is very, very critical. What's the difference between Forex and stocks? Okay, here's one thing I want you to know. If there's a stock Let's say Forex, you got Euro USD, and then there's a stock Apple. Okay. If a confirmation trader, if a confirmation trader, if the chart is going like this, and the guy who thinks, oh my god, Apple is such, it's going up so high, I need to buy it, and then some aggressive guy comes in and then he buys it right there. Okay, a person who's confirmation and aggressive says, I got to buy it. He has no idea he's buying at the worst prices, but he buys it right up there. Is he in any danger? Let's talk about dangers. Think about it. If a stock does not perform, what does that mean? What will happen to the chart? Just think of it very carefully. This is very important. Okay, it's not, this is not basics, it's a little bit more advanced. If a stock does not perform, that, if the company is not performing, well, obviously the stock will go down, but what happens when the company performs again? It goes up again. So, this person, if he's a nutcase and he's like, he just holds on, over time, a big company, like a big reputable company that's been in business for over 20 years, the guy will somehow, he might survive. Because the overall direction might be up of an overall stock that begins and it's good, good value, they have good books, good everything, and a person who just buys it, he might somehow survive, but he'll have no idea why. In the Forex market, when the markets are going up, what does that mean for EURUSD? What does that mean? If the markets are going up, what, is, what does it mean for Euro and what does it mean for US dollar? Yeah, that means Euro is strong and the US dollar is weak. And if you buy up here, can you most certainly guarantee me that the US dollar will always be weak? It will never get strong ever again? You see the difference between a stock and currencies? Huge difference, right? Here, there is no such thing as you might survive. It is certain death. Because the markets flow like this, because it's one economy to the next. <laughs> you got to check Trump tweets. Yeah, it moves based on Trump's movements as well. <laughs> Does that make sense? As, does everyone understand the difference between stocks and forex? 
Yeah. You you have to you have to understand these things that when you're dealing with a stock, you have a chance of of being not the smartest cookie in the world and still you can survive. In forex, you better be the smartest cookie in the world. Okay? And don't underestimate yourself. All it does, it takes a little bit of discipline and you got to sit down, put your head into it and pick up the knowledge, pick up the knowledge, pick up the knowledge. Once you get the right knowledge, you do your discipline and your routines. How many of you guys have actually finished the entire motivation and daily routines course with us? Now, let me ask you the most important question. How many of you guys are actually doing it on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, good. Good. That's the hardest part is to keep doing it. Okay. What's the rule of, of to create a habit? What's the rule? Let me see if you guys were paying attention. There you go. 66 days. Very good. You do it for 66 days. It becomes a habit. You're no longer working towards doing it on purpose. It just happens automatically. Trading is the same way. You do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Control risk. Focus on the upside. Reduce your downside. Focus on the upside. Reduce your downside. You focus on these kind of things, you always win. One of the clarities that the larger players have that I've seen is they have this one sentence. I don't like to lose. You hear, do you hear any trader saying that on the internet? I don't like to lose. Most traders will find an excuse, right? Yeah, but I have a risk to reward ratio, so I can be in a loss sometimes. You know, yeah, but if I'm doing a three is to one, a four is to one, then uh, I gotta have losses sometimes. You know what I mean? But how do you defend this quote? I don't like to lose. How do you defend that? Only way to defend that is if you know a good chunk. Okay? You have to know. Your, your knowledge must be a little bit higher so you can be like, my odds are so much higher in my favor now. And you reduce your risk and then you play the game. But you play the game of trading because you know where you want to be in one year from now, in 10 years from now, in five years from now. You're not just doing it to get unlimited money because you'll never know if you're doing well or not. Yeah, this is recorded. How many of you guys are, 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 are understand everything that I've explained today so far? Okay, so one of the things, one of the reasons why I wanted to get into how powerful the identity is, many people m misunderstand that their shortcomings is actually a problem when it's actually not. You can actually use your shortcomings of being aggressive or conservative or a confirmation trader and use it to your advantage. All it takes is just accepting, oh, I guess I am a little bit more aggressive. Oh, I guess I am a little bit more conservative. I need to buckle down and see where can I use this in the market. And there are places in the market that you need to get inside and say, that's my trade. I need to enter right now. It suits my personality and that's where you make your most profit. Okay, that is why we built the course, what type of trader are you? We released it a few months ago. I wasn't sure how it's gonna turn out. Uh, we just sent it to a select few people. We had 200 students pick it up on day one. So we had a lot of students pick it up on day one and we are officially launching that course today. We're officially launching that course today. You guys can pick it up. You will have the link on your screen. Armo is gonna put that up for you. It is now going for hundred and forty nine dollars it won't stay at that price it's gonna go much higher we're gonna raise it every quarter so I want you to stay on uh, on top of this course if you can pick up the course pick it up there is also if you can get the motivation and daily routines course that will also give you an extra edge yeah now I again it always comes down to knowledge right remember if I was to tell you keep this as your number one motto and keep this as your number one motto 
How would you go about learning in the real world? There's a lot of bad information out there, right? Do you guys agree or no? Okay, with a lot of bad information out there, but how do you filter out what's a good mentor, what's not? You need to control risk. Which is the reason why we help you take that first step in learning how to trade professionally by saying we do what we call the 30 day money back guarantee to tell you that, look, we've taken away your risk. Come check it out yourself first. Apply it, see if it works for you. And if you don't see a result in it, then don't take the risk. Then don't take the risk. Okay, so this is a five week course. It's extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, let me get this. Let me move the thing out of the way for you guys here. Sorry. Uh, a lot of you guys actually have access to the conference room. How many of you guys are actually in the elite community? Yeah. So there we go. We, we've opened up the elite community a little bit more easier. We're making it available to you know more, more of the four course bundle people uh, to get in there, get access to all of that stuff. But we don't, you know, I, I, I restricted it from before because before we would just let anyone in who pays for it. And I was like, okay, wait, we're, we're doing the whole wrong thing. No one's getting in by paying for it. We're gonna lock it down. We're gonna raise the knowledge. If there is enough knowledge, once there's knowledge in there, once there's knowledge in there, then what we're, what we're doing is we want to make sure they get in for free, try it out for 30 days, and then they work from there. They work from there. Okay? So, four keys to success. Knowledge, discipline and routine, clarity, and identity. Don't forget these things. Don't forget these things. I want all of you guys to leave here with a promise that you guys are going to work on these four things because these four things repeat in every successful person I've seen in the world. Do not forget that. Work on these things. Okay? If you feel one of these four things are slowing down or anything like that, then you need to get your butt right back in the game and saying, what's wrong? Maybe my clarity is off. Maybe my identity, I need to fix it a little bit. Maybe my discipline. Okay, I need to work on my discipline. Maybe it's my knowledge. I got to pick up some more knowledge. And then you go out hungry. And when you go out hungry, you pick up stuff faster. Okay? All right, guys. So use this webinar as your fuel and get out there and kick ass. Thank you guys for coming. I'll see you guys until next time. Cheers.